Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to a little bit of a different video. Today we are having a look at a TFT game that I played recently. Also, I want to wish you all a happy new year. This video is going to be releasing a couple of minutes before the middle of the night. And so we have literally five minutes left until we are, ladies and gentlemen, signing off for this year. And obviously next year is going to be a great, great year. I have a lot of things planned, a lot more community posts and shorts and kind of try to promote my stuff a little bit more. And we'll see how exactly that goes. So this game is a ridiculous game, by the way. Uh, you can already tell here, right? We uh, we hit the kale first, right? We we hit three kale, and um, this game I'm going to I'm going to survive with one HP, all right? And whether or not I'm going to win, I won't tell. But we made a really good run at least in the end. So definitely a good one. So the reason I sold the Lux here, by the way, was because I was expecting that to be an item and also because I didn't want to play Spellslinger. Now, obviously here, I'm already regretting the selling of a pair, right? So we have already, we have the two duelists and a Silver Star and I decided here to buy out the entire shop because obviously, because obviously we have the money and can't do anything else with it. So just kind of look for potential pairs. And we get another pair, which is uh, this is a very strong econ start. And then we have consistency, Loon's Echo and Electra Charge. Consistency is a little bit difficult. Um, for me, a little bit too inconsistent with my board. So I decide to go for Luden's Echo here. Why not? I mean, it's nothing great, but it always gives you value. And so I slot in the Yasuo here because I go, okay. Well, Yasuo definitely has higher value. I level up because that is what you do and put in the Renning. Now, in hindsight, I definitely shouldn't have done that. I should have sold something and put in the Blitzcrank for Brawler. Or maybe I'm actually doing that. Yeah, I actually I actually realize here I'm doing it. So now we have two brawler to do a list with one three star. And so the question is, are we going to win? Our unit price wise, I think that the enemy is in a better position here. But it is what it is. And um, I believe that we are going to win this one. Yeah, three star kale, pretty sick. I was thinking about the Thieves Glove here, but um, yeah, so I, I decided to sell everything, which obviously sells units that I wanted. However, this will give me a little bit of econ, and I decided that I should use... Because if you get econ early and have really bad items, getting to 10 gold early on obviously will give you much more value than gambling on, uh, you know, than gambling on, you know, hitting, hitting the correct units and stuff like that. So I'm just selling stuff. I'm just buying stuff. Um, so I kind of have some options, right? Because <clears throat> there is a vein. So, you know, I, this could be an anima squad transition which uh, obviously works pretty well with Ludens, right? So I, I'm not, at this point, I'm not really locked in to any comp. I could go Anima Squad, I could go Ox Force, I could go Duelist. Uh, Duelist would work the least well, but then again, it has the strongest carry, being uh, Zed, right? And so yeah, this game is lost to Thrill of the Hunt, very strong early game augment. Loon's Echo, a little bit stronger all over the game, but definitely not as strong early on. And so we will lose this, unfortunate, but it is so. Mm. 
Hmm. So that is another Kale and the Vein. So here I make the decision to put in Vein. I believe that was a bad decision. I think that Yasuo would have made more sense. But, um, you know, we will get to that. And then here I'm thinking, right? I'm like, okay, so we have the Anima Squad. I haven't played this a whole lot, right? This would give me Anima Squad with the Nasus, and then I would have Mascot. And I was thinking about, like, possible... How that would possibly work with, uh, with Kale and stuff. Uh, and then I felt like I didn't have reliable items enough to just go Anima Squad. I think I could have decided to take it though. And I think had I taken it, Thieves Glove is pretty decent on Bane. Because um, we can put that onto Misfortune later on. <coughs> and then go for like a dual, a dual carry angle. Yeah, I decided to not do that, so I kind of just put everything together and you know, try to hit the 10 gold while preserving valuable units. I was like, so, you know, probably Kai'Sa a good idea if uh, we want to transition into the Anima Squad thing. And then here I'm thinking, right? I'm like, okay, what do we take? So my favorite stuff is already kind of gone, right? So I'm taking the last Whisper here, which... In hindsight, I believe was not the best idea. Um, yeah, I I don't I don't know, I don't know if it was was a good idea, but um, here I'm I'm like trying to go for, I'm hoping okay something like Last Whisper and Infinity Edge stuff like that right, and then here I'm real quick doing the maths and I'm going like okay, how do we uh, how do we hit money, and then I put in I put in Sivir. And this will give me civilian, but I believe that I uh, could have went for four duelists instead, and I think that would have probably been better. So here with the Cho'Gath, I think I made like a split second decision. I went like, okay, Brawler is fine, but I think that I want higher value. I don't think that was a good idea in hindsight. Cho'Gath also not positioned correctly. Which is something that you have to keep in mind. And this is a Thrill of the Hunt player. So, again, right? This is going to be... Uh, this is going to be his strongest. Or the strongest his argument will be. Where Luden's Echo already is starting to become more valuable. And it will continue to do so. And... Um, here, I, I need to start focusing on Econ, right? So I'm like... I'm thinking, okay, do I sell <clears throat> Blitzcrank and Jinx, or what, what do I do here? And I think I, dis I, I, I end up deciding for selling the Kai'Sa, because at this point I'm kind of committed to playing something along the lines of Duelist. And so I'm kind of thinking how I can make that work, right? I'm not the best with uh, the comms nowadays. Because I've basically just started playing the set. I don't know, I'm like 10 games in or something. Um, but I wanted to share this because I think I thought that was a pretty hype game anyway. And um, eventually, eventually, I want to switch out the Sivir here. I went for a Last Whisper already because early on, a lot of people go for these armor perks like Defender and stuff, which is pretty strong early on. Last Whisper not very strong early on, let's be honest. So I think the Thieves Glove would have given me infinitely more value. Maybe I would have uh, had a little bit more money already as well, but here I'm starting to econ pretty hard. Because I I think eventually made the decision that yeah I had to I had to start uh, getting my eco econ going. And I think here I should have put the last whisper onto Vayne. I think I end up, yeah, I end up being like, okay, where, where, where do I put it? I'm actually not sure. Um, thinking very hard here because obviously the vein I can still sell where I can't really sell the uh, kale. So I made the decision to keep it till I know. And we get even more gloves, which is just... Um, I mean, at this point, I have to go Thieves Glove, right? 
uh, what do I do? I refuse to go for Thieves' Glove. I hate Thieves' Glove. And I, it's kind of irrational, right? But I don't, I don't like it because it's kind of weird. And so here I go like, okay, wait, hold on. We have an underground that we can put together here, right? So I put in, put together the underground and I go, okay, last whisper. <laughs> you see how long it took me to think about this? And then I put in the jewel gauntlet and I was like, okay, this is kind of a budget infinity edge last whisper setup, right? With Jeweled Gauntlet being better on Kale, so I'm thinking, okay, maybe I can get a Rage Blade here, right? And get myself a really strong Kale. We'll see how that is going. And then for the Underground, we are in a little precarious situation here. Yep. Okay, so this is the first loss. Lost pretty decent for Underground. We lost the econ that we would have gotten from winning but you see that the enemy team is making some pretty pretty big blunders right so you see they are very low on money but then they haven't slammed their items yet yet which <clears throat> is problematic because like either you go econ or you don't and then here <coughs> this is actually a difficult one right i'm like okay i could go Lun's echo again i could re-roll because i kind of hate everything here but i think i decide to go for last stand and this is obviously the argument that comes in and um let me tell you i did use it so i kind of used it full knowing Ooh, okay this is a hit and a half here by the way i'm hitting a lot of units which is kind of awkward now, because now we have underground, but we all of a sudden started hitting. So that's kind of weird. And I'm kind of just, you know, trying to figure out, okay, which unit is where, what, what is going on, what are the dualist units I'm looking for, so on and so forth. Then I went, am I going to sell the Ramus, or is there a one cost that I'm selling? But no, there isn't. And so we like... We lost a game, uh, we lost one, we have underground in, now we win one. We <laughs> which now puts us into this weird position where it's like, okay, we're at five points, which means we need to win and lose again <laughs> to to have optimal underground. So just keep that in mind and let's see if I, uh, if I luck out on that or not. <clears throat> it doesn't really matter as long as we don't win. Because then we would uh, be pretty delayed with the with the underground. Um, if we lose more, I have the ability to stay in and go for the second heist. And this is what I was thinking: is like last stand makes a lot of sense with underground because I can kind of just blue ball it and go for longer, longer uh, <clears throat> lost streaks. And then hard reroll out of items, and I could use it, use the underground because my items are kind of suboptimal, right? So at this point, I'm kind of hoping for losses <clears throat> more than I'm hoping for wins. And uh, <clears throat> well, this is uh, this 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 was a game that I wasn't sure whether or not I was winning or losing, because the guy has a pretty good combo of augments. And we end up winning. All right, so that's a win. Now I really want to lose next game. And I could have sabotaged it, which <clears throat> unfortunately I didn't. Uh, that that would have that would have made me look much smarter. Now here there's obviously one unit, right? And I'll need to tell you which unit it is that we're having our eye on. And look at that. It hasn't been like, okay. All right. Got myself the Z. Now this kind of locks me into Duelist, right? Because like an early Z, and I go, okay, do I, <clears throat> do I actually go Thieves Glove on Z? Because that makes Z strong right now, but in the end he will be much weaker. So I'm not sure anymore. Also, by the way, that leads to me Z. I, I don't, 
you know, clearly. So can we just put in Z, please? Ash? Can you Z Ash? It's Ash. Thank you. It's so funny because you can you can also just read my brain from my mouse cursor if you look at it. Just so funny. Okay, so here I go. What what do I do? Right? I go, do I go Thieves Glove? Yes, no, maybe. Because Thieves Glove could hit really good items, but it also will never hit as good items as I could manually hit. And so, yeah, in hindsight, I think I made a big mistake, but it ended up being fine. And we barely lose. Like, to this Lulu, we lost. And this is actually perfect, right? This is the perfect outcome for me. And I go, okay, well, fine. So I know that I'm going to uh, get out of this heist because <laughs> I've already hit my 50 gold and I'm actually kind of fine. So I just go, okay, cut and run. And do, did you see that? I got another sparring glove. So at this point, I'm like, okay, what is this? Like we've gotten like five sparring gloves at this point. <clears throat> and I don't... I don't know, but at this point I just have way too many sparring gloves, so it is a it is a you know thieves glove one hundred percent, and I could have built this one from the get go. I want to point that out. I'm go I, yeah, so I'm not going for a thieves glove on Z by the way, um because it's just <clears throat> it's not a good one. I want to point out that my Yasu is out of position, so that isn't optimal, right? Yasu should be a little bit. Positioned a little bit differently. And obviously we have people complaining about Jax, which yeah, Jax is strong, but you know it is fine. <clears throat> Jax is pretty strong. But so are other comps, right? Alright. So, what do we do with the items? This is a PVE round, so I'm like, okay, we're not gonna, we're not gonna go for anything crazy here. I also don't have a unit that I immediately want to sell, so I'm just not leveling up. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if it's worth it, honestly, like one less gold for a better chance at, because, yeah, a higher chance at hitting Z honestly would be pretty good, but me being me, I don't. And so here, this this kind of puts me into a weird position and I go, okay, I kind of want to go edge of night here, right? And so we find another, find another Kale. All right, level up. And now what do we do? I decide to put together the items and I don't know. I put, put it onto Vayner, I go like, hold on. Okay, do I want to do this? Okay, so I do it. But this is kind of suboptimal because I was expecting Hand of Justice to do to do much, much more healing than it ended up doing. Uh, I don't know. I remember Hand of Justice being a little bit stronger, I guess. Because um, this would obviously be what you put onto uh, the Jade Dragon, for example, right? And he would be incredibly tanky with that and heal himself a lot. But that ended up not happening. And so here, I'm kind of losing. I put in a, you know, put in a very weak unit with Fiora there. I don't know what I'm thinking. Not a whole lot, but, you know, it's fine. We're starting to build everything together. And then we get Contempt for the week. Just like that. There you go. Zed. And obviously, I'm hella taking that, right? So at this point, we're pretty locked into Duelist, right? So what are we looking for? We are obviously trying to build out the Kale, just because I managed to hit her. There is another Duelist player as well. And then we are kind of just trying to collect a frontline. And at this point, I'm not 100% sure what I want my frontline to be. I'm thinking about something like Aegis, right? Putting Echo in. Uh, putting Echo in and then being able to transition later to Leona, maybe. So I have like a brawler Echo, that type of front, front line. And yeah, I'm not I'm not 100% sure at this point, but obviously, you know, duelists. 
we want we want hacker for Z, which is important. And then we also want a front line. So Zed can actually do his job. So gotta gotta think about that one. I think the best bet would be something like a Leona. Like a two-star Leona would be pretty sick, right? But then again, hitting three Leonas gonna be difficult. Especially since, uh, you know, we have very strong comps here in the lobby. So I gotta figure out how to deal with them. And, um, well, so far we're not doing too hot, right? So, bada boom, bada bam. We are very close to level 8, finally. I am thinking about leveling up here. And just going like, okay, it's fine. I'm gonna level up one level earlier get a good chance at Z already but uh, I think at the, in the end I end up not doing it <clears throat> because I I feel like this is such a close game and then here I put in I put in the Kale just because I had so you know I had the Fiora in there which was like absolutely useless right so anything's better and a tier, t t t tier 2 unit is much better and this set, tier 2 units, did get buffed as well. So, that's also something good. Alright, so I get taken down here. But I also know, okay, that's fine. Enemy still level 7. I am level 8. Right? And so, <clears throat> also my, my augments are going to be stronger later on. For his augments. I kind of odd right now. And a little bit more all over the place where I'm just going dualist vertical, right? No, horizontal. All right, so <clears throat> here the question is, what do we take? And I decide on a sword because I'm obviously on, I, I'm not sure at this point, I'm thinking maybe I want an infinity edge, but you know, not very likely that I'm getting another jeweled gauntlet. And then the other thing is like, I'm thinking at that point, I'm still thinking like, yeah, Bloodthirster, but I forgot that Bloodthirster passive and Edge of Night don't work together so well. So I go, okay, damn. I, I think I realized that like a little bit later. So, all right. Gotta, gotta make a decision here. Should put in Fiora, like, uh, Vi, obviously, right? This is who I this this is who I should put in. And I go, okay. And under the pressure I uh, I think I put in Nunu eventually. No. No, I don't. Okay. So BF sword onto Z. This in hindsight wasn't the best idea. I think Edge of Night just isn't nearly as good as Bloodthirster. So okay. too bad. And Zed ends up getting stunned before his Edge of Night even does anything. Gets taken down. Spellsfinger, very strong. Previous games, I'd played like two or three games of Spellsfinger, and I'd had like three or four Spellslingers in the lobby every single time. This time, there was only one Spellslinger in the lobby, because of course I'm playing Duelist, right? I'm not playing Spellslinger anymore, so that was unfortunate, but they weren't really hitting as well as I had. And by the way, I still <laughs> I still should put in Vi here. Like, there's no doubt, right? But this is where, you know, we've hit level 8. And this is where we're kind of just re-rolling now. And looking for the units that we can get. Kind of built a decent collection of strong units. You know, I don't know. Sejuani. You know, stuff like that. I should, instead of the Rennington, put in Vi. I think that would be the best play. But I end up not making making that play, unfortunately. And yeah, the so <laughs> as you can see, right, the um, the jacks not standing enough chance, and that is because two people are going for Z uh, for jacks, and they're not really hitting, which is uh, absolutely my win. And obviously, the second the jacks player loses, he goes, "Yeah, kid, go." This <laughs> is okay, dude. All right. I don't know, dude. People are uh, people are very, very mad in this game. I, d I don't know. I didn't I didn't even really read the chat because I didn't really care. All right, put in gangplank. More three stars, and that is obviously super pog now, right? 
the freaking Echo. Definitely put that in instead of the Rennington because he's kind of a boring one and I don't need him for laser core anymore. We are still looking for a Zoe and bada boom, bada bam, there she goes. All right. Yep. Sell the Cho. And here I go away. So do I go Dragon's Claw, right? That's my first idea, but then I don't necessarily have an item for Zed. And so my decision is to go for Tier of the Goddess uh, and put put in and, and basically create a Sojin on, Shojin on Zed, which is really weird. It's, it's very, very weird. And at this point, I need to clear my bench a little bit, right? And it's probably best to do that right now. So, you know, I make a, make a space again. And I go, okay, hold on. I need to put in the Hackermans as well. And so now we have the Laser Calls, we have the Duelist, we have the Prankster and the Hacker. Want one more Duelist in. But, uh... I think that right now I don't really have anything. This is pretty much the setup that I want. And this obviously, my Z is going to be pretty good. Like this. But you still see that he is dying very quickly, right? And he's not really... Yeah. He's not really doing what I wish he did. And... Uh, <laughs> At this point, I'm like 21 HP, right? So I, I still have my augment. And at this point, I'm like, okay, the plan here is very simple. I'm going to go to one HP and then hard reroll eventually. And then here I hit the next Z and I'm like, okay, well, damn. So now I have five Zs, right? But <laughs> I kind of, you know, my bench is kind of weird because it's very full, quite a few good units. And you will, you will find this a lot with me. Is that I try to, that I try to make the decision of like, okay, so who is the champion that I can get out right now? You know, and kind of make, make some space in my bench. Because I hate having a full bench and then you hit a good unit in the shop. And then you have to lock it and yeah, it, it can be really disastrous. And so here... Down to 7 HP, and we shall lose again. I'm still, I'm still, you know, at 50 gold. I'm still not rolling. I don't care. Because, uh, you know, I, I still have... Still have the last hope. So. Getting a Renegade. So at this point, I've gotten, like, more Viegos than I've gotten Zeds, by the way. And then here we go with the next Z and I'm like, okay, actually, do I go, do I go reroll now or do I not? And I wasn't 100% sure because of my augment. I was like, yeah, I mean, of course I can take another hit, but I kind of want to, you know, reroll before. But then I didn't want to roll down fully right now because I can get that extra econ. And then at least... Uh, that might help me out. And then here. And this one. We lose again. <laughs> so now I'm down to 1 HP. I'm like, okay. Well, shit. 1 HP it is. Alright, let's see what we can build out of this board. And let's see if we can bring this one home. Or at least into the top 4. Because that, at this point, obviously, is my goal. And I see Zed and I'm like, oh my god, Zed. Give. And I got the Zed. So now I just need two more Zeds, right? We are currently at seven Zeds, two more. And we have, what, 40 gold. So, uh, you know, we better, we better hit that Zed. And obviously with the items, with the item, it doesn't really matter because obviously the item is just going to pop off from, from him and I can put it onto, and there's the Zed. So now I just need one more Zed and that's the Vi. Oh, and that's the Z. All right, Z3. Put the Bramble on to Sejuani. I also put the put the Negatron Cloak onto her because why not? And now I'm like, okay, I kind of want to get six Duelists. So we put out the Echo, right? Echo's out now. No Aegis. And now we have the six Duelists and I'm like, 
damn dude i sh maybe i should have sold units maybe i should have but i can't really level and the chance of me hitting hitting the uh kale is quite slim right and then just look at this set dude he is just popping off and i go oh my god wait i actually have a chance here I think this is when I realized, I was like, okay, this is really good, but I need to, I need to make sure that I win. So what is the next angle? Like, what is, is there anything that I can do, right? And Sidrani, I obviously, like, am I going to hit the Sidrani? I think in hindsight, there was a slim chance, but I was like, I don't know. And I want to stay ahead. So I was like, okay, maybe, maybe it's a Vi, right? Uh, maybe it's a Vein, right? And then here I get the Leona, and that is a really difficult decision now, because now I have um, the option for ages. And I go, okay, maybe... Oh yeah, by the way, here I hit the Kale, which means I'm one Kale off. However, the problem is, obviously, 16% chance to get a one cost. And I hit the Vine. The vine. And at this point, I make the decision that, yeah, it's not going to be the vein because the cost is going to be too high and obviously if you look at the board very very clutch but we do make it and take down the first enemy here jizaku and you saw that was a vein again there so i think in the end i would have hit the vein which obviously if you think about the like what is most likely of course hitting the vein is much more likely so yeah i think here at this point i hit the vein Obviously, the chances would have been lower, but here, bada boom, bada bam, there is the Kale. Beautiful. And I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not very disciplined with this, so I just hit reroll again. Obviously, I need to save here. Um, need to save here maybe to get to level 9. Or to have, like, a really big reroll. And now for the final item, I can't put anything onto Z anymore. So, at this point, I'm deciding for a Giant Slayer on Kale. I don't know if it was the best idea, but I figured since I'm running Duelist Horizontal, I should put it onto a Duelist instead of going for more defense. Because I could have also went for more defense on the Sijuani, but, you know, I figured that. I, I didn't want that. And so, yeah, I mean, we are kind of stabilized, but I, I don't need to tell you. One more loss and it is over. And obviously other people are starting to get low as well. So everyone's re-rolling and spending money. And um, or at least has done that already. And so I'm I'm kind of tinkering with how I'm positioning. I should have put the I should have put the vein. Uh, I should have put the kale where the vein is and the other way around. I end up not doing that. Which uh, makes my Kale die pretty early here. But Zed, still for life, still doing super well. The little bit of Omnivamp is going very far. And that is another win with <laughs> decent damage done by Zed. And you can see how simple TFT can be if you follow the rule of just, you know, go, go collect the units that you get, right? Kind of do what makes sense. Try to hit level 8 and then reroll for a strong 4 cost champion that you want to carry. And, uh, well, yeah. So, the first Jax player has died, which is kind of scary because that means that the next Jax, the, the other Jax player could still, could still hit because I think the other Jax player was the Sharon guy. If I'm not completely off on that and here i i don't know i'm re-rolling for the vein now finally which uh, doesn't really make any any sense but uh i i know that the game is going to be over anyway if um you know there's there's not much impact so if i don't you know hit something very unlikely then the dices have already been rolled and that ladies and gentlemen is now we hit the top Four, and we also hit the top two, right? So now there is Drache des Feuer. It should be Drache des Feuers. However, this is a German guy, apparently, and this is also the guy that 
uh, was fighting. And now here, obviously, right, it's the last second. So we're always going to be kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're always going to be skipping. And what, what I do is I take Hecarim because Hecarim will move Zed. And then I just hover him over Kale. And with two seconds remaining, I switch just Zed. Right, and Kale stays in her position, and Zed now jumps into the backline because I figured that he would try to move his, you know, weak underbelly away from my Zed. And you see the Zed goes in, he takes one carry, and he's gonna take the other carry here too, and that is GG. So thank you very much for watching, and stay awesome!